Temperature is a powerful stimulus on our nervous system and indeed on every organ and system of our body. And cold in particular can be leveraged to improve mental health, physical health, and performance, meaning for endurance exercise, for recovering from various forms of exercise, for actually improving strength and power, and for enhancing mental capacity. So let's talk about protocols for enhancing mental health and performance using deliberate cold exposure. What happens when we get into cold is that we experience an increase in norepinephrine, in noradrenaline release and in adrenaline release. The fact that cold exposure, deliberate or no, increases norepinephrine and epinephrine in our brain and body means that it is a very reliable stimulus for increasing norepinephrine and epinephrine. That's sort of an obvious statement, but that obvious statement can be leveraged to systematically build up what we call resilience. Now, when we experience a stressor in life, whether or not it's something bad happens in our relationship or something bad happens in the world and we feel stress, that stress is the consequence of increases in norepinephrine and epinephrine in our brain and body. Very similar, if not identical, to the kinds of increases that come from deliberate cold exposure. So deliberate cold exposure is an opportunity to deliberately stress our body. We can learn to maintain mental clarity. We can learn to maintain calm while our body is in a state of stress. And that can be immensely useful when encountering stressors in other parts of life. And that's what we call resilience or grit, our ability to, or mental toughness, our ability to lean into challenge or to tolerate challenge while keeping our head straight, so to speak. Deliberate cold exposure also has many effects on chemicals other than norepinephrine and epinephrine, most notably the neuromodulator dopamine, which is involved in elevating our mood, making us feel energized and enhancing our ability to focus. And that has a lot to do with how dopamine engages us in motivated states, tends to narrow our thinking and our behavior into a particular trench of goal-directed behavior. Deliberate cold exposure has a very powerful effect on the release of dopamine in our brain and body. And this is one of the main reasons why people continue to do deliberate cold exposure. Basically, it makes us feel good, and it continues to make us feel good even after we get out of the cold environment. In fact, some people would say they don't feel good in the cold environment. It's all stress for them, but afterwards they feel great. And one of the most common questions I get when discussing the use of cold for sake of mental or physical performance, metabolism, etc., is how cold should it be? How cold should the water be? How cold should the environment be? How cold depends on your cold tolerance, your core metabolism, and a number of other features that there is simply no way I could know or have access to. So I would like you to use this rule of thumb. If you are using deliberate cold exposure, the environment that you place yourself into should place your mind into a state of, whoa, I would really like to get out of this environment, but I can stay in safely. Okay, now, that might seem a little bit arbitrary, but let's say you were to get into a warm shower and it would feel really, really nice and you were to start turning down the warm and turning up the cold. There would be some threshold at which it would feel uncomfortable to you. And if you were to continue to make a little bit colder than that, you would really want to get out of the shower, but you were confident that you could stay in without risking your health. Another very common question is how often to do deliberate cold exposure. It's tough to make a recommendation on that based on any peer-reviewed study, although there are a few in humans that point to a threshold of 11 minutes total per week. So that's total throughout the week, divided into two or four sessions of two or three minutes or so. Now, that 11-minute cutoff is not a strict threshold and is actually geared more towards increases in metabolism. But I think the 11-minute threshold, meaning 11 minutes total of deliberate cold exposure per week, is a pretty good number to use if you need a number in order to keep you consistent. The second most common question I get about deliberate cold exposure is whether or not cold showers are as good, better, or worse than cold water immersion up to the neck, for instance. I also get a lot of questions about whether or not cryo chambers are better than all the others, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm going to make all of that very simple for you by saying Cold water immersion up to the neck with your feet and hands submerged also is going to be the most effective. Second best would be cold shower. 
Third best would be to go outside with a minimum amount of clothing, but of course, clothing that is culturally appropriate and that would allow you to experience cold to the point where you would almost want to shiver or start shivering. Now, there are a number of different important constraints that are going to dictate whether or not you use one form of cold exposure or the other. For instance, some people don't have access to cold water immersion. They don't have access to ice baths or cold water tanks, uh, cold ocean or cold lakes, etc. In that case, showers would be the next best solution.